The National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters, known as NCCAL, hosted a lecture about archaeology in Kuwait at the National Museum Theatre. The event was part of the Grain Festival for this year. The Secretary General of the NCCAL, Ali Lioha, and a number of academics, researchers and archaeologists were present at the event, along with a number of students and the general public. Here is more on the event in this report with Salem El Kenderi. The lecture about archaeology in Kuwait was divided in two parts. The first was about the ancient castles that existed in the area of Kuwait, including on the islands, which was presented by the archaeologist Shihab Abdul Hamid Shihab. The second part of the lecture was presented by Sultan Duish, who talked about historical presence of various groups of people who lived in the geographical area of Kuwait since the Stone Age. It is a new gate today when I I was talking about the Portuguese forts, and I found in this reference around six Portuguese forts. Is this true or not? Do the Portuguese they reach the north part of the Gulf or not? What was the relationship between the, the Ottoman and the Portuguese in that time? What was the relationship between the Portuguese and the Safawi and the local? It is, do the Portuguese they built a fort or not? Or they they use what's available there. Especially we know that uh, the Portuguese, they occupy the Gulf, I mean the south part of the Gulf, from Bahrain and Katif and to the south, according to the technology. They had cannon. Our, uh, the people, they don't have cannon in that time. So we need, we need to open a new window for this kind of research and to go deeply and to understand, not to follow what is published in 18th or 19th century and uh, also to use the technology and also to share this information not directly you print it and publish it without sharing it so this is the science and uh, it is our opinion it is my opinion about uh, uh, the portuguese in the gulf uh, the lecture come uh, as part of uh, the of enlightening the society in general about Kuwait history. Uh, the lecture took two angles. One is trying to uh, follow up in uh, how, how back can we trace uh, cities or villages or uh, 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 gathering of humans in Kuwait. And it's actually go back up to more than 7,000 years, which make Kuwait one of the oldest places in the world that have human gathering uh, in villages, uh, and that is in Sabi. And actually, they saw the, the development of uh, uh, people in Kuwait. How did they live, uh, especially in the Sabi area? And the other angle was about uh, castles uh, in Kuwait, historical castles in Kuwait, and try to trace different castles in Felica and uh, churches, religious uh, institution and uh, the two lecturers have uh, really showed uh, a great deal of information, very important and enlightening lecture uh, to uh, shed light in aspect of uh, Kuwait ancient history and that is in itself very important and very interesting for, for us as an audience uh, in my part as uh, chairman for the history department I find this information uh, very useful and should be looked deeply and carefully to uh, hoping that more uh, uh, excavation will reveal more about our history it's every day uh, a process of learning and the, today was uh, we, we gained a lot from uh, attending this lecture archaeologist discoveries prove that during the prehistory time Kuwait was in a settlement since the Stone Age taking advantage of its natural resources its important strategic reality on the top of the Arabian Gulf and the availability of sources of drinking water and fertile land. To wrap up the lecture for this evening, it took two dimensions, archaeology and history, before the existence of Kuwait. Over thousands of years, there were various presence of various people in the area of Kuwait and the islands, especially Feylaka, which was known as Icaros. And the question that rises in this lecture that whether the Portuguese had strong presence in the area of Kuwait or not. And the lecturers insist that the history of Kuwait needs to be rewritten. From Kuwait National Museum, this is Salim Kandiri reporting for the English News.